not just what's happening to us that we're looking at in our home, in our families, you know, in our neighborhood. This is happening everywhere. The entire world is kind of falling apart right now. So my question to you is, you know, you're, you're a pragmatist. I started just a, a minute ago, a centrist, and you're a family man and a grandfather, and you want to leave the world a better place. How can we best accomplish this? How can we survive everything that we're looking at right now, even if we don't know what we're looking at? What should we be doing? Well, I guess you could, the glib answer would be pretty much the polar opposite of what we've been doing for the last 25 years. I certainly think one thing is to move away from bubblenomics, which is where these central banks use their magical money machines to create asset bubbles, which then creates you know a surge in tax revenues. I mean, the government revenues exploded after COVID, believe it or not, and yet we still ran huge deficits. The government just can keeps outspending. And so we do have to have a, some kind of return to you know, common sense economic policies, and I think if we're, if we're impoverished as a country, and, you know, we are the wealthiest country in the world, but if we impoverish ourselves, you know, we're not going to be able to help out the rest of the world. And I think we just look at the contrast and, and city, I mean, San Francisco is a, is a microcosm for what's gone wrong and what's, you know, these bad policies. It used to be such a great city. You said you grew up near it. You remember yeah, it. Right, you know, right around the corner. Way. In this state, um, now I won't go there. I will not go back to San Francisco. I just can't stand it there. If I have to fly back home, I go to Reno and I drive down. I'm not going to San Francisco. Right. Take the 80. Well, it's uh, yeah, it's just it's heartbreaking, but it's happened to a lot of cities which have gone, you know, far left. And uh, you know, I, again, I'm trying to be bipartisan here and say we want to work together. I think that's part of the problem is that this idea that. If you're a Republican, the Democrats are evil, and vice versa. That's just really harmful, and that's why no labels. And you ask me, no, I think we've I made mistakes across the board. I don't blame Democrats or Republicans. I blame all the politicians and policymakers and alleged, I'm air quoting, leaders that don't know what the heck they're doing, and they don't have the sense to go find people like you who can advise them. I just don't believe in any of them. Well, for good reason. I, I know we're running out of time. I'll just say, you know, one of the things to think about from just a conceptual standpoint, I'm a big believer in things that work. And if you look at the NFL, National Football League, it really works. And it's had problems, but it always reinvents itself and it comes back more popular than ever. But the basic idea with the NFL is that you let the players play and the referees govern the game. You've got to have referees, and that's really what the government is. The government has to be there in a supervisory role regulatory role, try to regulate for competition rather than against competition, which, again, what the NFL does, they regulate for competition. We don't do that. We're, and we try to get with the government, the U.S. government in particular, and I think West, most Western governments, the, they're trying to play the game. The referees are trying to actually be the players, and it's turned out to be a disaster. So that's just my silly little analogy, but I think there's, uh, there's a decent amount of truth in it. Oh, no kidding. And NFL, I think you know my one of my very, very favorite people in the world is Jim Tunney, who's known as the Dean of NFL Referees. So if, if nobody's ever heard of Jim Tunney, you're not watching football or you haven't oh, watched yeah. football. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, sure, absolutely. <laughs> Jim Tunney, he's, uh, he's oh, one right. of, I've got five favorite people in the world. He's in the top two. Tells you everything you need to know. 